Hi, my name's Sam Mickelson, founder of True Worth. We're a talent solutions business, so it's all about people. And that's why we created a podcast channel. We wanted to bring together members of our True Worth collective, our clients, candidates, generally anybody in tech that wants to come and talk about their experience as a person, um, products, platforms or projects that they've been involved with. So you can find us on all of the normal podcast channels and platforms. Links to all of our socials are in the description. And of course, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got any feedback, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much and enjoy the episode. Welcome to um, today's podcast. Um, we've got a guest today talking to us about BI and data um, in an economic uncertainty. Um, today, we're going to be answering some questions around what industries we think will be unfazed in a downturn, how will investment in BI and data fare, and we'll also be talking about some strategies that organisations should be thinking about in 2023 relating specifically to data and BI. So today we've got Dave Parsons, Chief Executive at AIMM Data Analytics. Dave is a Microsoft data and BI expert. Um, he's worked in data for the last 20 years, uh, former head of data engineering for NHS professionals. He's also worked across a number of different industries, helping organisations to develop and deliver their data strategy. Good morning, Dave, and welcome. Good morning. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm good. How are you? Yeah, all good, thank you. Cold, but good. It's very cold at the moment. Um, depending on when this podcast actually comes out, um, maybe maybe January, February time, well, January, hopefully, um, we are going through that cold snap in December right now. So you've already been out this morning with your dogs. I've been out oh. with my dog. Um we're both not blessed with the natural uh, hair that a dog would have to keep them warm. So how's that been, mate? <laughs> Very cold, uh, wrapped up warm uh, with a woolly hat on as well. So it was all good. And plus running around after a ball with five of them chasing, it keeps you uh, warm. Well, I, I've only got the one dog. How you cope with five, uh, I've no idea, but fair play to you. Um. <laughs> Thanks for giving us the time uh, today, Dave. I really appreciate it. Um, we're going to dive straight into um, some of the questions that we want to cover off. Um, I guess if you could, you know, start by just giving us a little bit more of a, an overview of you and your background um, over yeah. and above my my brief intro, if that's OK. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, you've covered quite a lot of it off, but yeah, I've worked in data and BI for 20 years Uh in honesty, I fell into it, so okay. uh, I didn't train to do this. Uh, I started off life as a data input clerk when those type of things existed before data became big, um, and it just really went from there. Uh, and over the years, um, I've held a number of roles. I've been an analyst, a data engineer, um, a finance business partner. Um, so yeah, I've uh, been across a number of different industries, um, and yeah, it, it's all come down to data at the end of it. Yeah. Uh, and as you can tell from behind me, uh, with my, I'm a bit of a fan of Lego, and I kind of see data and BI in kind of the same way. The, the challenge of putting something together from a number of different parts um, and actually the, the end result um, is really satisfying. And especially when uh, you see business value determined from it as well, which you do uh, in a lot of cases from BI. That's a great analogy. Um, Lego and data. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. So what, one, of, one of the things that we wanted to talk about was, and I think it's something that we obviously can't ignore, it, the, 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 the data tells us that we are probably heading into um, a recession. Um, hopefully it, it won't be um, as bad as some of, the, some of the media kind of predict. But um, with that kind of economic uncertainty, you know, looming and on the horizon, um, for UK businesses, is is now the right time to kind of start thinking about investing in in a data strategy? Very good question, and uh, I definitely believe it is. 
so for a number of different reasons. One is uh, just due to the fact that we're approaching 2023. Uh, data is richer and more prevalent than it's ever been. Um, and we get data from every every single thing now, especially in business. So uh, those without a data strategy, um, even without an economic downturn, uh, are soon going to be left behind um, in markets where um, the competition is so fierce that uh, different businesses looking at customers in different ways and actually their own, in manufacturing, for example, production lines and efficiency. Um, with, with all of that in mind, um, without a clear and coherent data strategy to actually tie it together, to understand uh, the business can adapt and to actually service its customers better and to save cost and be more efficient, it's going to be critical for businesses to adopt the data strategy if they haven't already. Um, you touched on this a bit earlier, um, but some industries may or may not be affected by um, such a downturn, but I think most probably will be, and it might be a 50-50 split of those who would and wouldn't. Um, if we take, for example, uh, one of my clients at the minute uh, is um, a power station who are probably <laughs> reaping the rewards given the current economy uh, in that sector, but uh, and they're taking the opportunity to invest. So uh, going through a migration from SAP um, across to SAP HANA, um, and there's a lot of BI work spilling out of that. Uh, so they're taking the opportunity to invest while times are good for them. Um, but I think in the same breath, it might be a good opportunity for a lot of actually invest during a downturn. Main reason being is having worked in BI and data for so long, I found it that um, data teams are often the forgotten man or the forgotten mm -hmm. team member. And so uh, you can be knocking on the door of PMO saying, please remember us, because at the end of it, you're going to want to see some reporting, uh, some analysis of how, how did that investment go? Uh, what about this new business line? How is it performing? It all involves BI and data. And um, during that downturn, there really is an a number of different opportunities. So I know a lot of companies have um, got hybrid environments between on-premise and cloud. Don't want to necessarily take the plunge into full, fully cloud hosted because in a lot of cases, the work to actually move across is significant and would cause a lot of business disruption. Now, during a downturn, obviously there's a real good opportunity during a quieter time to actually make those migrations happen. And similar yeah. to the client I'm talking about, where they're doing a massive uh, migration from one version of a system to another. Well, data and BI can follow that and actually make it uh, make it more bulletproof in the longer term when we come out of a recession to actually build and build and build upon uh, a cloud hosted infrastructure. Sorry, I realize I've been rattling on a while there, but um, that. No, that's great. You've gone into some great detail there. And I think it's something that, um, you know, any any organisation needs to be thinking about. Um, so do you think then there will be naturally industries that, um, you know, will be unfazed by this? You mentioned the energy client, but, you know, I, I guess um, there are going to be other organisations that will be unfazed and they'll use this time to invest more in, in their data strategy then. Completely, yeah. I, I think uh, along with energy, things like FMCG, yeah. where um, it, it's all, it's kind of that period where um, what the businesses which are going to thrive are the ones we really need. Um, and so, uh, yeah, when it comes to um, food, for instance, yeah. we need food to live. So uh, that will not necessarily being unfazed, but less phased than the likes of retail, who are probably going to suffer the most if we do go into a recession. And do you think it's going to be a case of how do we, you know, drive more efficiencies, reduce costs, save money in what we're doing? It surely companies have been doing that for the last five, 10 years already. Is there is there any more that they can be doing? And, and how's data going to actually 
improve that even more? Um, again, a very good question. And I, I, to be honest, I think it comes down to the risk appetite of of boards. And right. it, it may well be that 50-50 split I talked about where some, I, th- I think a large proportion of businesses recognize the value of data in their organization. Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, do they necessarily recognize the uh, the effort that needs to go into a data governance program, which is critical as part of a data strategy? Probably not. So what really needs to happen is me and my compatriots around the country who work in data need to make it clear what all of this means by simplifying it. Um, people can often get lost in the meaning of like take data governance is a very, very good example. Um, I've seen in organizations where data governance means releasing a policy saying yeah. you must follow this process. That isn't data, data governance. It needs to be a program of change. It's a cultural change that needs to occur where yeah. uh, employees around an organization take ownership of, of data. And uh, I see data dictionary banded about quite a lot very important thing to have, but without the supporting infrastructure to support it as a business and as a team, mm. then um, it'll almost certainly fail. I realize I'm going off on another tangent here, but- um, No, like it, no, like, go, keep going. Yeah, um, I, I feel that, uh, yeah, it's down to the risk appetite of uh, each board. I do think uh, the majority of boards recognize the value of data, but it's actually gonna be up to, um, people who know data and BI inside out to help steer that for businesses. And it, and it sounds very much like um, a similar challenge that a lot of cybersecurity, you know, CISOs face is that um, cyber hacking, cybersecurity, you've, you've got to be the, the best insurance salesman in the world. Does you know, IT takes priority, I guess. So does is data kind of catching up then, do you think, like a bit like cyber in that respect? Yeah, I, I guess it is. Um, and uh, of, I mean, you can look at many organisations again where um, how many organisations have, uh, have CIOs but CDOs. So someone who's a, a data person at that executive level, that sponsorship and... Um, that's another um, thing which doesn't necessarily need to change, but needs more recognition that uh, executive or senior leaders in the business they need that they need that person up there who's regularly in dialogue with the board to help align data strategy with business strategy. Um, and I, I do hear that a lot. You know, I, I know fellow recruiter friend of mine um, who talks about that a lot. Um, that there's not enough data leaders out there. There's lots of, um, let me let me rephrase that. There's not enough data lead jobs, senior level data lead jobs, but there's a lot of people out there that want to lead data functions and it's needed. And traditionally, the IT director, data would come under that IT director. Now, a lot more organisations are becoming a lot more savvy to that. But that still needs to change, doesn't it? There still needs to more of that to happen. Completely. Um, and you're absolutely right with that. Uh, again, I see a lot of times where data falls under IT. Um, also, finance, it tends to be the two areas yeah. where data lives in. Uh, finance, for obvious reasons, I think CFOs have clocked on to the importance of data for a long time. Um, but I've got another analogy for you, Sam. So th- okay, this one is an analogy. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is around uh, having data and IT paired together. Uh, it's kind of like having the plumbers and heating engineers uh, thinking they do the same job where they really don't. Yeah. With IT really should provide infrastructure and uh, software engineering. Uh, the data which runs through all of that, it, it's not really their job. And it's it's much more business owners but business ownership then an IT function as I say it, which why it is why I think it needs its own direct line up to executive level. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally agree. And so 
talking about um you know having that direct line to the board and the executive level um this time of year many organizations look at strategy for the next year coming up and we've touched on a little bit on that but you know specifically what strategies do you think um companies should be adopting in relation to data and bi where would someone start then cool so uh, to me it's a great opportunity to uh i hate this term but it's used in consultancy a lot but uh go through a period of discovery okay so uh kind of stop and take a step back like i say if things are going to be uh a bit quieter then it's an opportunity to actually take stock of where you currently sit in terms of data maturity uh mm. if if businesses already have a data strategy actually a, a point to stand back and review it um but probably most critically is to look at uh at people and actually the tech that sits within uh the team because well as you well know technology has come on in leaps and bounds over the last decade um you'll see <laughs> so many different clients who uh are sat in what I call old school SQL Server stuff from 2008. Yeah. Uh, and they seem to be stuck there and wanting to make that step. But there's always something happening. There's always a new product or a new service which requires that system to still be stood up. Um, so it's really an opportunity, I think, to take stock. Um, so that's the kind of strategy I, I would suggest is look at um, now is the point for transformation if it's going to occur so that you can come out of the other side and actually be much stronger and more competitive. And and what what stakeholders in a business should be involved in that conversation or that that sort of discovery piece then? Well, ideally a CDO, but as yeah. we determined, they're not they're yeah. not always there. So it, it is going to be um, pretty much everyone across the board, that quite lit- literally, um, where a CEO's buy-in to uh, a transformation piece involving data uh, would be incredible, um, mm-hmm. or a chief operating officer e- even. Uh, I think ultimately it'll come to, down to CFOs, IT leaders. Um, they they will be the ones driving it because they will see the most benefit. Um, and uh, the likes of ops um, and CEOs maybe would need selling to. But CF, um, finance and IT would be, effectively be the drivers, as I see it. What would what would be the differences between a you know small to medium sized enterprise compared to a big enterprise client? Um, I, th- I think, from my experience, uh, small and medium sized, there tends to be a bit more technical know how at a mm. senior level. Um, yeah. So I can again draw to another client where the COO is very tech savvy. So um, I don't need to translate to plain English really to talk about uh, exactly what I'm meaning on a technical level. Yeah. And I, I found that they're prepared to be a bit more hands-on. Mm. Whereas in the larger organizations, obviously it's a very different proposition when your um, your main focus is going to be on investors and, um, and share price and other executives, multiple businesses. So yeah, um, I think that's kind of the difference. My my um, my most of my experience is small and medium size. Um, so I've only seen uh, a couple of large scale organisations where um, yeah, it's been very hands off and um, yeah. a bit more basic in terms of tech. Okay, all right. And so we've we've talked about a little bit about strategy. We've talked about the executive board, the the CEO, the CIO, COO, and CDO. What about um, you know a data professional who uh, you know a data engineer or you know a DBA um, or somebody maybe starting out as a data analyst? What what advice would you give to them for for next year? What should they be thinking about? Um, so I think that they, um, well, we're starting to see it now that there's likely to be a massive increase in candidates with a, a reduction in the number of roles available. Mm. Um, so it's going to be much more competitive in the market. So 
I would say if you're thinking of a change now, probably isn't the right time to do it. Right. Um, what it probably is the right time to do is to, uh, and sorry, another term I don't like, but it describes it adequately, is upskill yourself. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's so many resources out there, and whether it comes down to watching YouTube videos or signing up for something like Data Camp, where you can uh, look at project pathways to learn different skills, the the need for data, data engineers. Uh, I'm I'm a Microsoft man through and through, and that's where my skill set lies. Uh, where it doesn't is Python, because well, we had I think we had one um, one PC at school when I was there. Now they're teaching Python to kids. So Python is basically the up and coming thing, and it's everywhere now. Uh, so any experience of that will stand you in good stead. But all of these other scripting languages, as a data engineer, that's what you need. You need to be able to tap into pretty much everything. Same with data scientists. The standard analyst doesn't really exist anymore. Back in the day when we were uh, putting things together in Excel, that's uh, that is no longer the way. Uh, it's been disciplined uh, in a number of different areas and um, using that knowledge to actually apply it in advanced analytics. It, it feels like the future for IT and tech is everyone's going to be a developer. Mm. You know, completely. We've, we've seen that shift, haven't we, from first, second line support engineers to DevOps. They're, they're software engineers effectively or, or you know, as such. Completely. And actually, uh, most of the better organization I've seen, their software engineers and data engineers work very, very closely together because intrinsically yeah. the work they do is often the same same thing, but different parts. So, yeah, the, the DevOps approach has basically changed the game, I think. Now, we're going to we're going to talk a little bit about um, data governance. Um, and um, I, c I can already feel people going, oh, no, <laughs> you know, it, <laughs> it, it, it feels like the last thing that people think about, but it's so important, isn't it? And, you, and you've got a, a very strong opinion on that. And, um, you know, what's what's your take on on how organisations should be, you know, thinking about that as a policy? Um, and what how, how do how do companies get that right first time? So, um yeah, I think when we originally talked about this, uh, I got a comment about being me being opinionated, not from you, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, but yeah, I probably am on this, and it's it's mainly because my um, it, my some of my experience with data governance has been used the word there policy, and I mentioned this before, where uh, a policy doesn't mean anything, where where there's nothing instilled to actually make make anything mean anything so you can mm. feel data governance in an organization i realize it's a very dry subject but it's hugely hugely important for an organization and often it can be the difference in uh, a plc putting out a figure uh which to one person is calculated in one way and to another person is calculated in another way yeah um, um it can be as simple as talking to auditors uh, as many finance and data teams do, and having to explain how numbers are calculated. With effective data governance, not only do you have an explanation of all of that documented, but what you've got is somebody responsible for that and the agreement that any changes to it go through a process. Mm. Um, I, I have a whole book on data governance behind me somewhere, um, I'd heartily recommend, but uh, the long and short of it is it's not a policy. It's not a stick in plaster or some, a tick box exercise. It's a, it's a whole transformation program um, that an organization needs to go through to get it right. But the benefits of it, um, it reduces risk massively for organizations, especially when it comes to legislative um, issues around We'll talk about GDPR, but data protection yeah. overall. Um, and uh, what it also does is allows um, allows data teams to get it right as well. There's been a number of times uh, when I've been in perm roles in the past where data teams come under some hammer and they come under hammer all the time without a lot of appreciation for the work they do. 
uh, and the complexity of it. Uh, and actually, data, data governance doesn't necessarily just need to apply to data. It's about getting the process of releasing right. Um, and it's about the whole data process as well. So, yeah, I think a lot of people have different um, different thoughts about the data governance and what it actually means. And I think a lot of them start having the definition of their data, whether that's in tables, in databases, field by field, um, whether it's how data connects together or calculations used in Power BI, for instance. Yeah. Um, but it's all of that and much more. And uh, one of the other bits which is critical for it is to know the end-to-end -end process of your data. So it starts off being captured in a source system and yeah. with the correct data governance implemented, you can see how it transforms and how it's passed from system to system to data warehouse to report um, and keep that trail of how that data is used throughout an organization. And also to kind of highlight what data you do have. So again, look, looking at some clients where they haven't realized the wealth of data they've got and um, actually the richness of it has helped diversify some services by realizing there's a pocket of data that's untapped. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I could bang on about data governance all day, but um, yeah, there's so many benefits to an organization, but the key point I wanna raise is it's not a sticking plaster or a quick fix. It's, it will take a while to get right. Yeah, and, and so the board needs to be patient then, basically. Completely. Yeah. As, as with a, a lot of these things. Yeah. Okay, that's that's great. Thank you for that. Um, Microsoft is your, um, you know, uh, chosen area for, for, for data. Have you never been tempted into AWS or GCP recently? Um, um, you know, what's your thoughts on how Microsoft has kept up with these more kind of open source um, platforms or, you know, data sources, cloud data platforms? Sure. Um, so, yes, absolutely. Uh, I, I myself want to understand more uh, about AWS GCP. Um, but then uh, my my old older teams would laugh at me saying this, but uh, I'm always the least technical person on the team. So <laughs> I've always gone down the management route myself and I felt comfortable with Microsoft products. Um, what I do love about what Microsoft do is take Power BI, for example, they release new features all the time and you don't have to wait for a big bang every two years or so. It's con consistent release after release after release of functionality. And that's a benefit of uh, Azure as well. There's always uh, new features and functionality going into each um, part of that. So, yeah, I would like to step into AWS, for instance. Uh, and I know there's a lot of similarity to, um, to Azure, but um, it feels like home, Microsoft. I don't know what to say more than that. <laughs> well, they, they, they've, you know, they've um, not reinvented themselves, not quite the same route. It's not really the way. I, I know from kind of 15 years ago when... Um, you know, PHP and Linux was was first kind of emerging as a um, serious player, basically. Um, it felt like you were either Microsoft or you were Linux, and and there was a, a, this anti-Microsoft thing, a little bit like now how we have, you know, well, I'm either an Apple person or I'm a Microsoft person, uh, and, and you get that, um, that, snootiness a little bit but I, I i do believe and i was talking to um a software engineer in denmark only the day before yesterday and i said to him you know do you care about that now and he was like no as long as it works and i can use it and it does what i need it to do there's not that same sniffiness about whether it's you know, Linux or, or or Microsoft or whether it's PHP or, you know, C Sharp. The, the, I, th I think the next generation just don't care anymore. Is that fair to say? I th think it's definitely fair to say. Um, and I'm coming from this as a, as a kind of a data warehousing and BI position rather than uh, anything else, because um, 
as a data engineer, you've got to know your C sharps from your SQLs. Yeah. But uh, yeah, as as a as a platform, yeah, Microsoft is where I'm comfortable. Yeah. Um, and obviously, um, I, I appreciate you giving us the time to talk today, um, Dave. But you're part of our True Earth Collective network, which we're growing uh, day by day at the moment. And um, it's also important to know if you're, you know, a company listening to this podcast and you are kind of in that situation where you 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 don't know where to start, um, you can come and talk to us and tap into our expertise. And it's a broad network. It's, it's inclusive. Everybody's welcome. But we're trying to select uh, people to be in the network who want to take part and be collaborative and help our clients with these challenges. So a client can come and talk to you for a couple of hours and, and we, we, you know, we won't charge them for that. But if they want to then tap into the network, they can talk to you about uh, a data strategy and they could talk to somebody else in the network about an IT strategy or maybe something specifically around what cloud technologies or cloud platform they should choose. What would you, you know, you know, if you were to have an hour with somebody, what would you try and cover in that hour to try and get as much value for, for the client? Uh, main thing is understand the challenges that yeah. the client's facing uh, and then obviously how uh, my company can support, but also the collective as well. Yeah. Um, and that is the great thing about the collective. So my expertise is Microsoft Data and BI. That, that is me and my organization, but there are many others in the collective who would touch AWS GCP. And even wider than that, we're, we're looking at project managers as well, where uh, if you've got specific projects uh, which need delivering, then actually an end-to-end -end team to provide that is possible as well. It's great. It's, it's a network of uh, similar-minded people who um, all want to help clients. And what would I try to achieve from it is just to understand as much as I can what uh, what the client wants to achieve, what challenges they've got, which maybe they haven't even considered. Yeah. And of course, based on the fact that we have got this kind of diverse network, it's still fairly small at the moment, but we're, we're seeing already we've got a really nice balance of skills. I think we can we can add to that. But for somebody coming into the collective, then if they are very Microsoft focused or GCP focused, they can learn from you about Power BI. And um, we want to encourage that as well, don't we? Completely. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It's that kind of environment where um, people are learning from each other already. And uh, yeah, it's just a fantastic environment to be in. Good. And, and that mentorship program that we want to launch as well in the future, where companies can tap into a senior level person and help their internal junior data person as an example to get better and learn more and open their horizons a little bit more i guess so we want to we want to encourage that as well don't we completely um dave i really appreciate you giving us the time today it's been brilliant i know we we could have talked a lot more we're trying to keep these podcasts not short and sweet but we don't want to kind of overload people so i think we'll bring you back in um, in the future to maybe expand a bit more on some of the subjects we touched on and maybe um, hear from, you know, what other people want to hear about, what do they want to listen to and, 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 and get information on. So thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day with the dogs. Will do. And um, listen, um, I, again, thank you for, for, for being with us. No worries. Thanks, Sam. All right. Take care. Cheers.